What is going on, gaming nerds? Welcome back to Midnight Gaming with Mystic Nightmare. Thanks for coming to the channel and hanging out. Hopefully, you guys are having an amazing day. I'm having a pretty decent day. And hopefully, all of you fathers out there had an awesome Father's Day. It is midnight yet again, yet again. We are back on Russian Fishing Fort. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do a little bit of a Belaya hotspot and lure update. Let's get started. Okay, so to start us off with, um, basically every now and then I do one of these Belaya River videos, and for the last four days I've basically been uh, fishing Belaya River. Now, the reason I've been doing this is because the the a couple weeks ago the Yama update came out, the Yama River update came out, and in that update they stated that they did a air quotes um, updated grayling and trout uh lure and bait fix on the game the fact of the matter is is i was terrified that this is actually going to screw something up in the game um it actually hasn't and i've been fishing for the last four days trying to figure out exactly what it was that they updated or what they changed i can't find anything i have tried flow fishing i have tried feeder fishing i have tried spinning i have tried so many different lures for the last four real life days trying to figure out exactly what they changed and they haven't really changed anything so i figured since i've been doing that i've got a lot of the lures and everything that's going that's that's going on right now that's kind of hot and and what's working i might as well just do one of these updates so to start off with let me just say this uh over the past year or so, every now and then I'll try to do some feeder fishing in the six meter hole, which is right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk a little bit about that. Then we're gonna I'm gonna talk about the hot spots, and then I'm going to talk about the actual lures, and I'm gonna talk about lines and gear setup today as well. But recently, in the last couple of days, I've been feeder fishing with this setup right here, which by the way is absolutely way bigger than you actually need if you're going for burbots. Burbots have actually become more active. In the past, they've only really been like one or two burbots per night. That's how active they've, they've been for me. So I never just really went for them. Sometimes I'll even go two or three hours with a with a fishing line in the water and not caught anything even burbots or, or anything else when it comes down to feeder fishing so i never feeder fish here but i tried this with pieces of fish and i actually caught about four to five four to six i'd say four to six burbots every single night that i tried doing this which was really surprising because that normally doesn't happen this is way bigger than it needs to actually be when it comes down to the gear setup and everything else you can go with like a nine to ten uh ten kilogram uh, uh uh rod and reel or i should say reel with like a 20 kilogram 15 to 20 kilogram rod and like a 10 kilogram line and stuff like that just keep in mind that when it comes down to burbots their trophies are around nine to ten kilograms uh, on top of that, I did a full cast into the six meter hole, which is absolutely a massive long way to do to, 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 to do that, to cast, and it takes a long time to actually get to the bottom, but I've also caught something else, which was very surprising. I have caught a significant amount of catfish. I am not kidding. There is a lot of catfish that are coming out here all day and all night long. I was very, very surprised um, when and, and they're only about two or three kilograms, so they're not that big of a deal. But the fact of the matter is, is catfish are starting to come out of this. So burbots are getting hotter at night. Um, I wouldn't come here specifically for the burbots, but I'm just saying if you want to throw out a line, you can go ahead and do that. And all day long, if you want to keep a line in the water, you know, cats are actually starting to come out of here, which is kind of surprising to be completely honest with you. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about actual spinning. I'm going to talk about all of the different spinning spots first. Every now and then, I will come down to the very, what is this, north? Yep, the very north end of this area, and I will fish down here. Basically, this area down here is more for spoons. It's very wide, it's very deep. You can fish here for spoons, and you can catch some fairly big browns if you're lucky, and you stick with it. The fact of the matter is, is this place is normally not very hot. It has become slightly hotter within the last few days, meaning that you can catch some fish here. Now, it's not the hottest spot on the lake. 
or on the river period but it is getting to be kind of a medium hot spot so if you're a spoon guy or girl and you're loving spoons and you want more spoonage you can come out here and this is usually a better spot for spoons because you can do like jig steps and you can do speed up slow downs and and, and and different techniques like that but this place is has actually become a little bit hotter when you can catch you know a fish every two or three casts something like that but like i said it's not super hot it's not really great for spinners and stuff like that it's more for spoons um and that is the first spot honestly if you're coming here for bite rate per hour i really wouldn't be fishing there um if you're coming for fun and you're coming just to do some spoonage then you may want to try that area out next spot right here is this one right here this is our big rock right here this used to be the absolute most popular spot it used to have the the browns the graylings um, hardly any asp, a few chub every now and then, maybe an asp here and there, hardly never any perch, okay? This has gone completely dead. It is absolutely dead. I have, basically, I, I, I fished here for the other day for two hours, two hours straight. I caught a total of two fish. So this plot has gone completely dead, so I highly suggest not coming here and fishing there. Down here... Let's see if our feeder rod actually has something on it. I don't think it does. Nope, does not. Okay. Next is this spot right here. This is a favorite for a lot of people. Um, spoons usually work here. Spinners work here. Poppers and everything else work here. This place is actually fairly active as of right now, but it's not super active. It's a little bit more active than the previous area I just showed you. It's not super active though, but it is still somewhat active. So if you want to come here and try a few different lures and stuff like that, you can go ahead and do that. But honestly, I don't think you're really going to catch as much as the other spot. See, there's one right there. The two that I've actually got in my keep net right now and the one that's on the line right now is actually all, all have been caught here. So it is somewhat active and you can go ahead and try fishing here. Um, I'm finding there's a lot of smaller fish that I've been pulling out of here. Nothing really great, nothing huge. Not super, super active, but definitely active. Okay, um, that's a very hot spot for a lot of people. Uh, they usually go right there first. I do not go there first. Um, I used to when the poppers were super popular right there, but it's, it's still active, it's just not super active. Now, before I've told you guys that down here at the very south end, that this area is one of the best spots, especially when it rains for browns. The fact of the matter is, is unfortunately, this spot has become completely dead. There is one fish, one fish that you can catch here. And that is a perch. So if you're somebody who's actually looking for catching perch to turn into feeder fish and stuff like that, you could come here if you want. Even the perch really aren't biting that hot. Um, but if you wanted to try, you could come down here. This place has pretty much gone dead with anything. Chubs, um, asp, browns, graylings, everything. Nothing is biting down here except for perch. It's been absolutely insane. I've never seen this spot be this bad before. Um, so I would absolutely stay away from it. Okay, now as you can see, we're going into nighttime, and I do not like videos that people put out where they're in the middle of nighttime and you can't see the river. So, before we move on and I show you the actual hot spots that are working right now, I'm gonna go ahead and wait until next morning. We'll see you guys in a minute. Okay, welcome back. It is the butt crack of dawn and almost 6 a.m. So, before I, I forget, let me just say this. The hottest time of Belaya right now is from 6 a.m. to around noon. Now, usually with that, you're pretty much going to be catching a fish pretty much every single cast. It gets very, very hot, very, very quick. I'm not talking about temperature. I'm talking about the hot spot. It becomes fairly hot with fish very quickly. It goes on till about noon. And then after that, it slows down a little bit. It's still fairly active. You can still catch fish every, you know, almost every cast, every other cast or two casts something like that but usually between 6 a.m and like noon that's where it's be that's where it's becoming hot now the first spot that is actually fairly hot people are starting to use this 7133 i think is what it is it's like right here and basically is it over here it's over here basically what they're doing is they're coming around this bush right over here 
and they're casting to the right of this rock right through here. Now this is actually fairly active. A lot of this area over here and over here is actually active, but in my opinion, it's not the most active. Um, it's a fairly active area, but you're actually casting into the main hotspot that I'm going to be showing you in a minute. Um, so it's really just kind of better to go over to this other, I think it's 6933 is the one that I was, I'm actually going to be showing you in a minute, but you're basically casting into that area. So you might as well just go up upwards a little, a little upstream and, and cast up there. Um, and it'll be a little bit easier for you to actually do the fishing up there because you're not pulling towards the way that the, the 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 river is flowing it's flowing from right to left and this way it can be a little bit of a pain um, a lot of people are kind of shouting this out in the chat in my opinion you're basically casting into the other area that's the hot spot this area is hot but i personally prefer up here this is my spot that's been going on it's been absolutely crazy lately it is 60 now you got to go around this bush over here and come to your left and it's just to the right of this rock right here basically anything and everything over here is completely hot right here okay what you can go ahead and do is you can cast out to the straight you can cast out a little bit to the left if you're using a popper then you want to kind of cast out to the this big huge rock over here to the left a little bit and go ahead and cast in there with the poppers they're working really really well right there as you can see immediate bite when i first come when i first cast in so you're pretty much good to go there so 67 30 all the way around here 31 32 33 whatever it's all good um let's go ahead and talk about lures uh, basically when it comes down to your lures, I have tried everything, everything from two grams all the way up to five grams. They all are working. And I'm not kidding when I say they all are working. They are all freaking working all the way up to five, all the way up to these dragonfly bell zero zero seven. So all of the, all of the snowflakes are working. Um, these dragon dragonflies originals are working. All of these small little tiny spinners right here are all working. Um, the spikers are all working. Yes. The hornets, the Achilles, except for this one, for some reason, I'm not having a great time with this one right here, but the other ones are working. The dragonfly longs are working pretty much every single freaking lure that is from two grams all the way up to five, six grams are actually working very nicely. However, there's a few that people are kind of shouting out as being the best out of all of them. The spiker two zero eighteen is one of them. Um, also the spiker, where is it? uh the spiker 2008 i believe i actually have it on a separate no i do not where is my spiker 208 i gotta show you guys there it is right there spiker 2008 is working right here all of these spikers are pretty much working but the 2018 and the 2008 are being said by a lot of people to work the best when it comes down to uh, Aquilas, uh, all of the Aquilas are working. The brown ones, this one right here, the 006 is working great. Um, and the Dragonfly Bells, which are the ones that are right here, these are actually working as well. So pretty much everything is working. It's actually quite nice right here. It's more about the spot that you're at instead of actually having a certain lure. However, there are certain ones that are working the best, which is the Spiker 2018, the Spiker 4006, and the Hornet, which is the one that I've got on now, the Hornet 1001. In my opinion, the two that are absolutely working the best is the Zeman Hornet 1001, as well as the Aquila 4G006. I have had more luck with browns than this one on this one than anything else. So if you're going for browns, a lot of browns, you may want to consider trying this one and, and playing with this one a little while. Um, if you're not having the greatest of luck with browns, go for the Spiker 2018 or the Hornet 1001. This is what I've been having the best luck on. On all of them, they seem to be uh, pulling out the best fish, the most fish, and the most 
most often browns and everything else like that. When it comes down to poppers, if you are a fan of poppers like me, poppers are working. However, they're not quite working as well as spinners. The popper 4001 is, eh, it's okay. It's working, but it's not the greatest. Four zero zero, uh, popper 4F003 isn't really the greatest either. A little bit better one would be the F006. That one's working pretty well, but out of all of them, the best one is the red 400. Uh, F004, I'm sorry, the F004, a lot of numbers. Basically with this one, I look at this rock right here and I toss basically just to the right of it. Make sure that when you use the poppers, you go ahead and use them around 6 a.m. I go ahead and switch it up to a 25 real speed, uh, 20 to 25 on the real speeds on pretty much everything. I have caught stuff during six, uh, 16 real speeds, 14 real speeds, but I find that the highest bite rate is uh, between 20 and 25. Um, like I said, with the poppers, basically with the poppers, you pretty much are going to be wanting to fish around between 6 a.m. to noon. And then once you hit noon, pretty much just switch over to your spinners because that's where you're going to be more hot when it comes down to bite rate. The fact of the matter is I just love poppers. I love using them. I love doing walking the dog. You can do straight retrievals. When it comes down to lures and spinners and stuff like that, a straight retrieval works absolutely fine. I know there's a lot of people that are always about the jig step out here or the ghost jig steps because you don't actually get the jig step um, uh, screen indicator saying that you're doing a jig step to come up but a lot of people when they come out here they'll usually do a jig step of some sort where they rotate a couple of times and then uh, let me see if I can pull that hunter one no it's the hornet idiot so they'll pull the uh, they'll do the jig step kind of like this and they'll cast out and they'll go they'll sit for a second which you should always do out here and then They'll do one single rotation and then let it sit for a little bit. They'll do two single ro or two two rotations and then let it sit a, a little bit. You don't actually have to do this now. The straight retrieval is working just as well as everything else. So grab a beer, put on a movie um, if you're a beginner, whatever, and just sit here and fish. Cast out and fish. Cast out and fish. If thunderstorms hit, good. You're going to start getting a lot of big fish that are being pulled in and everything else, and you're going to absolutely love it. Um, when it comes down to your setup, I have noticed this entire time that I've been playing this game that when it comes to Bly River, you can go between usually a very low uh, diameter kilogram weighted line all the way up to a seven kilogram weighted line or a seven kilogram um, uh, fluorocarbon, which is basically uh, this one right here, which is my medium light setup, obviously 7.4 kilogram fluorocarbon um, with a 7.2 kilogram uh, main line. Normally, this is absolutely fine. However, I've noticed a very big difference recently since this update with this new one. I've noticed that the best you're going to be able to do is a 3.5 kilogram to a 6 kilogram main line. Anything higher, you're going to see a drop in bite rate from what I'm experiencing over the last four real life days. I do go with the 6.2 kilogram fluorocarbon just in case I hook into a pike. I have hooked into a couple of pikes in the last couple of days, which is surprising because you don't hook into them very often on here. But from what I've seen, the 6.2 actually works absolutely fine. You can go with the 3 kilogram if you want, but I go with the 6.2 just in case of pikes. And then the 3.5 kilogram upwards to a 5 kilogram, I think, is what I pretty much suggest. I find that it the fish are actually biting much, much better when it comes down to that. Um, that size of line and that size of setup. Basically, with my medium light, I feel like it's kind of become worthless. The poppers still work on it and everything else. I can still catch fish on it. I just feel like I get such a better bite rate with this lighter gear. It is a light setup, and it's absolutely fine. Um, but I use a 3.5 kilogram because I can get upwards of 310 meters of line on this. Um, you can get close to 300 meters on like a spark and stuff like that as well if you're a beginner. Uh, but that's why I use this and you can also use a five kilogram line. You can probably get still close to like 275, 300 meters with that as well. So I think I've pretty much covered everything. This is your Belaya update since the update of the Yama River. It is 
Father's Day or the day after Father's Day, June 21st. I've hooked into something nice here. It's trying to spool me. Um, June 21st, if you guys are watching this a couple weeks later or a month later, remember, fish move. Their preferences preferences, pref, preferences change. English words, good. Mm, America. Their lure preferences change. Um, so don't get pissed off and hit dislike on the video because the fact of the matter is, is it's your own fault for not coming here sooner. All right? It's not my fault that the fish change. I'm just saying I still get comments, people getting mad, saying hot spawns aren't hot anymore. Fish aren't biting on this lure be, be, even after the video's been out for like three months. It's because, you know, people, they don't look at the date when the videos are posted. So as of June 21st, that is your Belaya update. If you like the video, hit the like button. If you didn't know, hit it. Just make sure no matter what you do, subscribe. Thanks for coming to the channel and hanging out. I appreciate it. Keep gaming. Keep doing it. And I have a blast. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Take care. Have a good one. And bye-bye.